Hi, I'm Uma Lord. And I'm Sadie Weed, and this is AAC TV. Last week was Kindness Week and Valentine's Day, and the candy grams were a success, so thank you to everyone for purchasing one. And speaking of Valentine's Day, the city of Reno hosted the Run for Love recently, so let's run over to Joey for more information. I'm here at the Love for Run race in downtown Reno before Valentine's Day. This organization is holding a four-mile race, raising money for Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Task Force. Any ages get to run or walk in the chilly streets of Reno. Uh, I have a friend who's been walking every day since October of a year and a half ago. And so I walk with her and so I'm supporting her and helping her. And I just love getting out and doing all these runs and dressing up. It just kind of means a time to celebrate. I love Valentine's Day with my kids. I always celebrate with my kids and my grandkids and get them things and baskets. Because um, it's about everybody for me, just the one person in your life. I feel good today. I uh, didn't know what I was going to be able to do, so I feel really good about how I ran and how I finished. Because I wasn't ready, I haven't been really training, so I just was kind of did it as a fun and I had a really good time, so I felt really good. Going to Home Depot, and then I'm going to yoga, and then I'm taking my two little girls out tonight for a daddy dinner date for Valentine's Day. The Love for Run was a success due to many participants running and the amount of donations that were collected. I'm Joey Batetta reporting for AAC TV News. Thank you, Joey. Speaking of Kindness Week, thank you to everyone who participated in the dress-up days. With more on the festivities, here's Luke and Cade. Every year, Leadership dedicates a week to promoting kindness within our community. Leadership directed a special event for each day of the week. Monday was Pride Day, celebrated by an ice cream buffet. Tuesday was Mental Health Day. Sticky notes were displayed on a wall near the Commons for the taking. Each sticky note had a compliment written on it, and students were encouraged to pass them around to each other. On Wednesday, Environmental Awareness Day took place. Mr. Fitzgerald was given his soapbox to encourage students to recycle. His Econauts rolled out the school's new recycling system. Keep a lookout for the blue bins for recycling materials and green bins for compost. Thursday was Domestic Violence Awareness Day. Information on violence prevention was scattered throughout the school. Kindness Week's finale on Friday was Cultural Diversity Day. Leadership held a cultural identity fashion show for students to take part in. Students also got to take a shot at breaking a pinata. Thank you, Luke and Cade. And remember, be kind. Do you need some extra help with your math class? Math teachers are offering math tutoring in the Compass on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 2.30 to 3, so check it out and get that grade. Are you looking for more community service hours and care about the environment? If so, come join the Econauts Club in Mr. Fitz's room every Wednesday at lunch. Speaking of lunch, the Culinary Academy is hard at work in offering restaurant dining. Abby and Isabel have more details. Hi, I'm Isabel Malone with AAC TV. In honor of Chinese New Year, the ACT Kitchen has opened up the restaurant the public. The students have been working vigorously in preparation for today. The menu was prepared months in advance, but the actual preparation of the food starts today. Uh, we are serving chow mein, fried rice, cashew chicken, uh, steamed buns, almond cookies, and more. Students, teachers, and relatives had the opportunity to visit on opening day. I really like the service and it's a nice atmosphere because I get to sit around the table and play, you know, with my friends and just chat. Uh, so I, er I ordered the egg drop soup and the chow mein and uh, I can't wait to eat <laughs> Today was a success for the culinary students and the customers. With ACTV, I'm Isabel Malone. Thank you, Isabel and Abby. We know the student chefs put a ton of work into this, so do yourself a favor and enjoy a meal at the ACT restaurant. Seniors have started a new tradition this year by opening a senior Minecraft server, and here is more about the server with Piper and JB. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. What am I doing? Well, I'm playing Minecraft on the senior Minecraft server, of course. Didn't know the seniors had a Minecraft server? Well, let me tell you about it. Ever since the pandemic, students have found a variety of creative ways to keep in contact with each other. One of those being the game Minecraft. Minecraft has been wildly popular since its release in 2013. It allows users to create an adventure in a simple landscape. The senior class decided that this year was the year to create a server that includes a wild variety of homes, battlefields, and even a fully functional post office. Well, I mean, I always like playing Minecraft, and everyone kind of always wants to start a server. It's just kind of hard to find the time. 
So when I tested positive for COVID and a bunch of other people at our school tested positive for COVID, we were all locked indoors for two weeks minimum. Some of us longer, you know, that's how it be. And so I figured no better time to start a Minecraft server when everyone can actually play together and interact as a community than when everyone's trapped inside of their homes and needs a little bit of escapism. It's been a little while since I've played most recently. I'll log in and then I'll complete one big build. So like, if you look at my house, it's up here and there's no roof because I, I built all of my house and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to do a different project. So it really depends on if I'm in the mood to finish a project, but generally about once a week, sometimes more if I'm building something. While the server started off with only seniors, it has grown to include a handful of underclassmen as well. Well, I sent a meme to Morgan, Miss Marr, and she introduced me to all of the seniors. And then from there, they invited me to the server and uh, kind of how I got on. I usually play every day after classes. I didn't really, I haven't played recently, but uh, I definitely play more than most people usually every day. My favorite part has probably been the community and just playing, building and that stuff with the community. It's a lot of fun to be able to make stuff and show it off to people and just make stuff kind of for a purpose in general. I've really enjoyed that. Players have maintained a good environment within the game, respecting others, in-game items and builds even having a courthouse and often gifting one another instead of having a form of currency. And one of our most active members, well, they have big plans in the making. I think my favorite thing about the server is the fact that it gives me a chance to hang out with people that I don't really have the chance to see in person very often. Like with COVID and everything, it's a nice way to hang out. And it also gives me stuff to do. Like I can build stuff or I can like learn new things in the game, uh, which is pretty nice. At the moment, me and another person on the server, Thor, we're working on a massive castle it's i have no idea how long this is going to take us it's a lot he built it in creative first and we're using uh like a mod inside the game to basically see like a ghost of it but gathering materials is taking like weeks like legit weeks i'm pretty busy with school and stuff outside of school so i tend to only be able to log on like two or three times a week in the evenings but it's enough time to hang out with some friends and putter around on projects well, now that you know the seniors have a Minecraft server, we hope to see you there. Even if you're an underclassman, don't be afraid to ask. Signing off for ACTV, this is Piper Lucky. Thank you, Piper and JB. How fun. This year's yearbook is on sale for $40, but be aware there is a limited supply and to guarantee your copy, you have to purchase your book before March 11th. After March 11th, the price is $50 and you won't be guaranteed a copy. So order now. Reporting for Trailblazer Media, I'm Sadie. And I'm Uma. Thanks for watching. <laughs>so thank you to everyone for purchasing one. Sorry, it's a little slow. I don't know, I'm glad I was able to put my armor because yeah, I feel because like that's more natural. Like yeah. 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 Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is AACTV. <laughs> so, I'm Reporting for Trailblazer Media, I'm Sadie Weed. And I'm Uma. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh sorry. I, I, <laughs> that's it for this episode of AACTV. I'm Sadie Weed. And I'm oh, Uma. I accidentally looked at her. Thanks for watching. How fun. This yearbook's. Or, whoops.